Tim Quast, good morning, sir. How are we doing? Good. How are you guys? Good to see you. Happy Monday to you. Happy Monday to you as well. Anything jump out to you last week in the markets or just kind of more of the same? Well, I figured Dennis would be taking me to task today over <laughs> over tech. <laughs> I'm giving you heat? Why? I don't give I don't give heat. I it's not like uh, I just gave Kathy Woods heat for the last 20 minutes. I don't give heat. <laughs> <laughs> well, last Monday, Tim, you were you were yep. bullish tech, were you not? Yes, I was. Yep. Yep. Well, so we pull big, back a little bit here. Some market. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. What are we? What are you saying on tech now? We pull back a little bit here. Um, are you still? Are you still bullish tech? Anyone on the pullback here? Well, so remember, the only way I look at the market is through the lens of market structure. Yeah. So you know the rules uh, and the behavior of money behind price and volume. So uh, if I I continue to say that the market cannot perform well if the 50% of the market cap that is comprised of tech. If you So if you look at tech and you look at consumer discretionary and communication services and you, you know, sprinkle tech through all three of those, uh, that uh, if people are owning those things, this is the question we should be asking. If people are owning those things, then that part of the market has to reflect how the overall market behaves. So one of the things that we do internally is we look at the performance of ETFs, exchange traded funds, like Cathy's, <laughs> and, uh, and we compare them to the, the stocks that comprise those instruments. And so it's, it, and if you look at the two things uh, over, over the entire market last week, so uh, there are you know, 11 sectors, uh, and if you look at the underlying stocks and the S&P 500, the S&P 500 was basically flat. And yet the, e the, the stocks comprising the market were down 2%. So the question then uh, arises, how is it possible for these instruments that are supposed to track the market to diverge so dramatically from the underlying stocks? And if you take energy as a, as a it's a case in point. Uh, ener ener the energy ETF from State Street, XLE, was down two basis points last week. Yet the underlying stocks, the, the basket that comprises it, were down 7%. So how is that possible? You could say, well, thankfully, I own the ETF and not the underlying stocks. But the the point of the matter is that the ETF is supposed to track what the underlying basket of stocks is doing. That's so why is that why is that not occurring in the stock market? And you would say traders, traders who are listening to this, why would you care? Well, you should know what is occurring in the stock market. So how is it possible for that ETF to do well? And the underlying basket to not to not do well. Explain. Please enlighten me on this. Yeah, very explain that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I think it all ties into what happened last week, which was quad witching. So quad witching means that there are uh, expirations of derivatives that are futures and options tied to indexes and individual stocks. That's how you get four. So. If you depend on derivatives instead of owning the stocks, there's a possibility that what you do differs from the stocks. And there's even a bigger reason. So suppose that you, you're BlackRock and you're running trillions of dollars of, a, of exchange traded funds and, uh, and you don't want stuff that's going down. So if you're, you're interacting with say Morgan Stanley, Morgan Stanley is your authorized participant who brings you a basket of stocks in exchange for uh, shares of ETFs to offer to the public. Suppose you say to, to uh, Morgan Stanley, we, would, we, don't want, we don't want Exxon Mobil and Chevron and all this stuff because that stuff is going down. Uh, but if you give us a check, just some cash, we'll take that instead. And that's called cash in lieu. 
And so where am I going with all this <laughs> for you traders? There is, a, there is a point here. There is a lesson for all of us who are trying to trade and do so successfully. Uh, but here's what can happen. So, so a, a Kathy Wood can, uh, in, in the same vein, could take cash instead of Tesla. If I don't want Tesla stock, I could tell my broker, I just want, I just want a check in place of the stock that you, the rest of us own. And so then the ETF does better than the rest of us. Uh, and the question then is, is that okay? Is that okay with all of us? I mean, the whole point to it, like having authorized participants is so that the index, obviously the ETF tracks the, the basket of stocks right. very closely. If, if 7% difference, why would the uh, authorized participants not just be coming in and then you know bring building the basket and then obviously, you know, turning it into right. XL8. Right. So, so Why? let's look at that. Right? <laughs> Why are they not doing that then? Right. Well, right. So here's the, here's the trading point. Um, I'm, I'm going to share my, my screen or at least attempt to do so um, because you would want to know this is, this is the whole point for traders. You would want to know if that is occurring and how would you know? How would you know? Uh, well, let's come over here. And I'm, I, I happen to have, so, so you can do this, traders. Go to marketstructureedge.com, and you can look at this too. And, and I've, I've got GameStop on my, on my screen because it's a, it's a, we're going to lead into energy. And you say, well, GameStop has nothing to do with energy. Well, that's the point. In the stock market, there is a set of rules that determine how things occur, and they're the same for everybody. So if you want to know... If Kathy Wood is uh, using cash in lieu, it will show up here. So here's GameStop. And what this is showing us is uh, here's sentiment. Sentiment is merely a measure of supply and demand. Everything is about supply and demand. And so if you looked at, at GameStop and look at short volume, <laughs> short volume is the percentage of trading volume coming from borrowed stock. And notice that all along here, it's about 60%. And look at what sentiment did on the 18th and the 19th is tick ticking down. So we know, we know that uh, the citadels of the world are manufacturing stock, believing that it's going to go down. All right. So let's go look at energy. This is telling us you would not want to own GameStop. And I don't care how powerful Wall Street bets is. If Citadel knows, looking at the supply and demand, that there is no longer an exchange of shares occurring, if there's anything going on, it's cash in lieu, this is what's going to happen to GameStop. It's going to go down. All right, so let's go look at energy. Uh, let's, let's, I'm going to go over here to the dashboard and just pull up the, the energy sector. And there are, in this basket, 139 stocks. And so we look who's leading, fast trading. All right, so let's go look at the supply-demand balance in this. Uh, whoops, let me go back. It's going to show up. It's, uh, I, I want to go back and look at this and talk about cash in lieu. So look at short volume. There's the trend in energy, and it's the very same trend as we saw in GameStop. So it doesn't matter whether it's energy or if it's communication services or tech. If the supply of stock is rising and sentiment is falling, then we know that whoever has to balance out their portfolios at options expirations each month isn't doing it with stock. They're doing it with cash. And what will that do to the prices of things? Well, they'll decline. It's that simple. And you can see it in the math. So, I, you know, it's one of my bones of contention with regulation in the market that this is possible. Yeah, it doesn't sound it doesn't sound possible. <laughs> so, right. um, so what are the other um applications of uh, of this knowledge how else can we use this knowledge 
well, let's talk about tech, right? I, yeah. You know, I said, tech, if, if, if we're going to follow the market and we're going to ha- follow that 50% of market cap that has to be tied to tech, yeah. uh, then we should see people buying tech. So I'm, I'm, let's go look at it. So much, much, uh, pardon me. How quickly does this data change? Um, <clears throat> like how quickly do you right. see, and obviously, you know, is this like something that's over the course of days or can it change in the course of hours? How quickly does, you know, the market sentiment right. change? It ch- So it ebbs and flows in about 10 day increments. Remember, if we day. go back all the way back to February. Remember, Dennis, you and I talked about this February 22nd. And I said, the market will struggle. Uh, for roughly 10 days. And why is that? Well, because there's a there's a, a period of time in the markets between when people put money to work in 401ks, let's say, uh, and when uh, derivatives that can be used as substitutes for stock positions come due. That's about the third week of the month. And then the ends of months when all these funds have to true up their tracking to the market. So all it's a very important concept for traders to, you know, you don't have to be a, a high frequency trader like a Citadel or a Virtu or a Two Sigma or a Hudson River trading. Mm-hmm. If you understand that these things move in increments, that's how the market works. So looking at tech, look, look at tech here. And it, and it hasn't done as well as I thought it would. And we're not through this yet, by the way. I still have... I all so I grew up on a cattle ranch, and so I'm going to use a rodeo analogy because I <laughs> rode, I rode things that bucked. So I like to be out of my stock positions into expirations because you don't know what's going to happen. But if you're on that horse and the and the chute opens, now you're stuck for eight seconds. You're going to have to ride this thing. And that's how, <laughs> okay. and that's often how it I, is. I get so, bucked off stocks right. all the time. <laughs> uh, right. Exactly. Well, I've, uh, so we talked about Palantir and we should look at Palantir uh, and we will, but look at this. So here's, look at the short volume trend in tech and sentiment. I mean, here's where they topped, right? This is where everybody should have been out of the market right there. February 12th. February 12th. Because, yep. Yeah. That was the point. That'd be a good sell, actually. Right. February 12th. Now look where it is today. So sentiment right now is at, uh, so as of the uh, Friday, we're at 7.6, and the market tends to trade between 4 and 6. So we are, we're bucking out of the chute, and yet we haven't gotten the returns that should have been delivered with this kind of recovery from below five to above five. Let me explain this for traders. So the whole market has supply and demand. And, and uh, if, if demand exceeds supply, stocks are above five. If supply exceeds demand, they're below five. And the whole tech sector, 400 companies there. And notice who's leading. The behavior that is leading is passive investment, exactly as you would expect around options expirations where everybody has to rebalance their portfolios. But what are they doing? I think they're using cash in lieu. And this is why the the tech sector has not done as well as you would expect. If everybody had to go out and say, you're underweight tech, I I need to own Apple because Apple is supposed to be 10% of my portfolio and it's 7%. Well, what if... What if I just take a check instead? Well, Apple will not rise. That's what happens. And how and how important is that from a trading perspective? Well, I mean, it's it's difficult, right? We're getting into the weeds there. But the beautiful thing is with with market structure edge, you don't have to worry about that. You just look at short volume. The short volume is rising, and the and sentiment is topping. You know, it's it, it tells you right there that you're going to have a very difficult time delivering results i'm going to go to palantir i i mean i'm some i should that everybody wants to talk about all the time (laughs) right 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 let's go look (laughs) at it right so it's It's tired probably i would say like i get requests from traders all the time you know obviously i'm you know take your time but you know individually sent to me you know a lot like you know a lot of you know tip through twitter some people find my email it's just literally you know a lot of different you know ways that people ask me about stocks Right. I would say probably the stock I get asked the most 
and it's multiple times a week is Palantir. PLTR. People All love right. this stock. They love talking about it. They want to be in this stock. This is the stock that people want to talk about. Right. And uh, so so here's how I look at it. And I like it too, right? I I talked, I said, I like Palantir. And if, you know, if I'd followed my, uh, my wife, Karen's uh, suggestion, I told her, you know, Palantir is, look at the sentiment, you know, look at short volume, looks awesome. And she said, you should sell it before options expirations. <laughs> and she was, she was correct. I mean, there's your, we, there was a great return in Palantir, but here's the problem. You know, if that whole, the, this concept that I'm talking about where ETFs that own $5 trillion worth of stocks in the U.S. market decide not to buy it, but instead to use a substitute like derivatives, like futures or options or cash, then what happens is this sentiment peaked right there. Now, you don't, you know, it, it doesn't mean that Palantir, the run, any opportunity in Palantir is over because it's still above five. There is implied demand, but it means that in the next couple of days, if you own Palantir and it rises, you should take that money and run. Here's beautiful Palantir, sentiment at 10. Then here's where short volume pops above trend. That's where you should leave. If, if short volume is way above trend, there's your opportunity. And you don't buy it till the sentiment ticks up again. But this is the problem. It's the, the options expirations period that I think for traders is very challenging. And it's because there is so much substitution occurring. Mm -hmm. And maybe we all have to learn to avoid about the 18th of every month. As and this an investor. Maybe. Right. Right. Yeah. What do you think about the quiet the witches at quiet witches as turning points in the market? I mean, you've seen that, you know, you had right. the gamma and wine last March and stuff. I mean, right. I think this is a big week for the market. I mean, I'm gonna Gordon. I can sit tight. I really I really do because you made okay. I mean it was just Thursday and the spoos were seventy five handles higher than this overnight. Right. And we sold off, you made the Friday low, the weekly low. And now you you know you're just getting bounced. It just it just doesn't feel like you're just gonna rip this thing up. I mean, I could be wrong, but it just doesn't feel like we're ripping right back up to thirty nine fifty four thousand. What did your work tell you on the you know major turning points on the quad witches? Well, on, that's a great it's a it's a great observation, Joel. Because if you Thank go you. back and yeah, you know no, I and I think it becomes bigger and bigger. Uh, if you if you consider that. There are only so many stocks. So we can we could have 370 SPACs come public <laughs> over the last year. Uh, but but that does not it does not change the fact that we've got what the, the planet is a wash in money, and that money wants to be in equities and bonds and various other things. But let's just think NFTs. of it this way. Right. NFTs, art, real estate, it will find its way into things. Uh, but if you're going to try to try to uh, true up how you track a benchmark, those things are always going to tie to expirations periods. And so you could look at the end of the year. You could look at each quarter. And I think these things become bigger and bigger and bigger because there isn't enough ec underlying equity to satisfy all of the money. So what does it do? It looks for a substitute like a derivative. And that's why I think increasingly we as traders need to be very careful around these options expirations periods and particularly the quarterly ones. So we next one is June, but still we're going to have, we've got one coming up in April. That's going to matter today, by the way, new options trade. I think it will be a very good day for tech because the, instead of buying stocks, Everybody will look for options. And I'm, I don't mean tr the, the traders. I mean BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street. They're going to use options and futures to substitute for stocks because they can offload the risk of being exposed to Tesla or Apple or Microsoft to Goldman Sachs if they just have an option. So then tomorrow's Counterparty Tuesday, all the banks will true up their books. I think Monday, Tuesday are going to be very good days for tech for that reason. But if they're up, you should be out.
Tim Quast is the founder and CEO of Market Structure Edge. You can learn more by going to the website. The link is up on the screen right now, marketstructureedge.com. Tim, always a pleasure. Good to see you guys. All right.